Hey YouTube, happy new year. It is January 1st, 2024. And I uh, hope all of you watching this video had a great holiday season, uh, but it's January 1st. Don't have to be at work today. Got a little national holiday. Uh, figured I would make a video for you and start up the 2024 bee season. In zone 9B where we live, this is sort of the beginning of the bee season for me. I've been talking about it over the last few videos. The maple pollen is budding. I know many of you in the other parts of the world and country are like, you gotta be kidding me, it's January. But here in Florida, in zone 9B where I live in Jacksonville, the maple pops out this week, which is a natural pollen source and a little bit of nectar, which also means since we're past the winter solstice, that the queens can start rearing. I'm out here on a nice cool morning. It's already almost 50 degrees, so the bees are gonna be flying soon. So I have a lot to show you today, but as a little bit of an intro, what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna make some one-to-one -one syrup. It's time to switch on one-to-one. -one. I'm gonna show you the maple pollen and show you what it looks like when it's budding here in Jacksonville. And I'm gonna show you some of the, uh, the hive maintenance that I do this time of year uh, and a few other th little things too. So come along with me today. This is probably gonna be a medium length video, but it's January in Jacksonville, Florida, zone 9B. We have a lot of work to do. Stick around. All right, it's time to make some one-to-one -one syrup. You guys have seen me make syrup before, but I'm just gonna show you everything I do. When I make any of my syrups, I make it in a big pot like this on an outdoor fryer cooker. And I have gotten notches on the inside of this pot for one-to-one, -one, two-to-one, using 25 pound bags of Walmart sugar. This is the cheapest source I still can find. If you got cheaper sources of sucrose, great. So what I essentially do is I just fill the bucket up to the one-to-one -one line. Okay, I filled it up to the one-to-one -one line. Hopefully I didn't make you sit there through that. Um, and I essentially heat this up to boiling. Uh, boiling on the fryer, put the lid on to keep the heat in there. And then after it's boiling, I just throw in my 25 pounds, stir it up, let it cool down. I do add a little bit of um, Thymol uh, Manly uh, recipe to mine to keep the fermentation down. Uh, I'll show you that a little bit later, but making one-to-one -one syrup, this is how I do it. Okay, our pot of boiling water is ready. All I do is cut the bag open, and this is the beauty of this method, is I'm not doing any measuring at this point. It's all just going in to the one-to-one -one syrup recipe. Uh, these recipes are easy to find on the internet, so I'm not going to go into the details, but basically it's important to know that this is one-to-one -one by weight. Uh, so you got to do a little bit of formulation based on how much sugar you're using uh, to get the recipe you want. Um, once this is in here, it's just a few seconds of stirring it up. Um, and while I stir this up, I want to show you one last thing that I talk about. So this is my thymolized uh, syrup. I've got a separate video on making this. Basically, this is thymol diluted in alcohol uh, with some lecithin in here to keep it emulsified. Um, this is a very old recipe to keep sugar water. It does a lot of things for the bees, a little bit of thymol. But the reason I do it, uh, two capfuls in this entire 25 pound recipe will keep it from fermenting here in Florida. Now granted, this time of year fermenting isn't as big a deal when the temperatures are a little bit cooler. Um, but if you just add this in here, it really it gives a slight hint of thymol smell, but the bees don't mind it. Uh, they probably actually even like it. And I know it's good for their uh, guts and for some nosema sort of things. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it just to keep my sugar more stable, less fermenting. Um, and if you, are into hummingbirds, I'm not telling you how to do this, but I will say this little bit of thymol will also keep sugar syrup from fermenting in your hummingbird feeders, and the hummingbirds will continue to come to a feeder uh, long after the three or four days you're typically supposed to leave sugar water into your hummingbird feeders. Okay, so this is all, it's completely dissolved. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the propane, and that is my one-to-one -one syrup. Obviously, I don't like to feed hot syrup to bees, so this needs to sit out here with the lid on it to keep the bees away from it, but just uh, let it cool off before I put it in the hives. That's one-to-one -one syrup. Okay, for those of you that aren't familiar, this is the red maple. I'm sorry, this is the silver maple. I have a red maple, but the, the red's not blooming yet. These are the blooms that are the first tiny nectar source, but primarily a pollen source for our honeybees here in Jacksonville. And as soon as this pops, it really starts booming. 
These are the buds that are not quite uh, blown out yet. So you can see we're just at the first blooms here in Jacksonville, uh, but it's right on time here in January. And, uh, but I wanted you to see what they look like. When you start seeing these at the very tops of your maples, that is when I start putting out one-to-one -one syrup. Picture of a little lady there, she's touching it. You can even see the pollen on her pollen baskets as she's collecting it. It's just a little faint yellow pollen. That's what it looks like. I'll try to get a few more shots. Here we are on the 1st of January. The first silver maple buds have started to bloom and the ladies are starting to work this uh, primary pollen source, a little bit of nectar in there. But as soon as the uh, maple blooms here in zone 9B, that's when I start feeding one-to-one -one syrup so that we have uh, the stimulation of the brood rearing. You have to be careful if you're giving sugar water this time of year that you give the bees enough space because they are gonna start laying uh, eggs and, and rearing brood, which could lead to swarming if you don't uh, take the appropriate splits off. But I just wanted you to see zone 9B, the maple's blooming and the bees are working the pollen. It's about 55 degrees out today and the honeybees are working the silver maple, which just started blooming. This is the first pollen and a little bit of nectar source uh, of the year here in zone 9B. When you start to see these buds, they've got natural pollen coming in, which can stimulate brood rearing. A little bit of one-to-one -one syrup will really get them going, but you have to manage swarming if you give them that nectar. Bees still are taking pollen from the pollen feeders. So you can see that they've not exclusively gone to the maple yet. When the maple really starts blooming, they will completely ignore this pollen feeder. So this is an indication that it's not completely turned on, but with the images I showed you of the maple, you can tell they're starting to take it. This is what it looks like uh, when bees are taking, this is ultra bee um, in an external pollen feeder. All right, we've made our one-to-one -one syrup I'm out here flying, uh, or watching the bees fly today. It is nice, it's about 60 degrees right now. It warmed up nicely. I'm just gonna, gonna do a quick hive check in here just to get a good look at the cluster. Uh, we looked at them a couple weeks ago and they were booming. So I, I'm expecting these to look really, really good. And I'm gonna put um, some feed, one-to-one -one syrup in half of this uh, feeder. Now, I'm gonna continue to reiterate the point that it's early January, the maple pollen is coming out. One-to-one -one syrup is gonna be extremely stimulative to these bees, especially on these warm days. This will create a swarming problem if you don't manage your population of bees. So I'm doing this intentionally to make a lot of bees with a lot of brood in order to make splits as soon as I start grafting uh, in, in queen rearing in mid-February. So this is an intentional early stimulus in order to take advantage of the pollen that is coming in naturally uh, here on the maples. So let's just take a quick peek and let's give them some food. So there's the cluster. Um, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, probably good frames of bees. Uh, I'm not gonna crack them open and look for brood with that many bees. They are obviously uh, having some brood in there. Um, so that is a good situation. Now the thing I love about these feeders, now granted they take a little extra uh, storage to, to keep them because they're just like keeping a super, is I can feed these bees without getting inside the hive. Uh, this only works um, if you don't have any sort of division boards for uh, kind of like a double screen boards for nukes. I usually kind of slowly give them, I'm not filling this up at all, I'm giving them probably a half a gallon. Like I said, this is extremely stimulative. Um, with pollen and one-to-one -one and warm days, she's gonna start laying, uh, which is what I want, but I'm gonna have to keep an eye on them. If I start seeing bearding, if I start just seeing a lot of bees, I'm gonna need to start my double on here and get a nucleus colony started above them, uh, especially after I start grafting. So I won't actually call it a nucleus until I add a new queen, but I'll start getting some vertical growth here. Anyway, that's one of them. Here, let's take a look at the next one. All right, here we go. Take it take a peek. Wow. Um, that's, that's at least not eight frames of bees for sure. So that one is doing great also. Um, two peaks. Give them some food. 
same exact way I did the last one. And then uh, I'm gonna do all of these hives. I've already given the sugar to the Long Langstroth over there. I didn't record that. They look great too. Um, I expect to have more brood than I know what to do with, but this time of the year is when I need to get my three frame nukes going again and get all of my supplemental bees ready um, to possibly sell to some new beekeepers or just create my own backup resources. So here we are, one January, zone 9B, Jacksonville, Florida, feeding the bees to get the stimulation going, primarily to take advantage of the silver maple flow that just started this week. We got seven more weeks of that, so it's bee season here in 9B. This is the time we build up, getting ready for Queens. For those of you in the rest of the country, uh, a little bit cooler, maybe you can just uh, in enjoy this and enjoy your winter, but uh, this is what you have ahead of you. Thanks for watching. So just as I was getting ready to put this video together, the sun came out and shined on the hive. And I just kind of want to run you guys through here and look at the activity out here. These are doing great. 